Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Lisa Conti. I'm the founder, president, and CEO of Jaguar Health. I'll put up some forward-looking statements to dispense with those and get on with the story and introduce you to the company. We do all drug discovery from plants used traditionally in tropical areas to leverage the knowledge of healers, shamans, and rainforest areas to do more efficient drug discovery and development. And we did take a product all the way from our discovery process, a tree growing in the rainforest, to this first-in-class FDA-approved anti-secretory agent. The drug is called Profelmer. The brand name is MyTessie. It is organic, fair trade, sustainably harvested, and it is an FDA-approved drug. And it is the only oral drug approved by the FDA under botanical guidance, by which there is no practical pathway to develop a generic. So even though you'll see later on we have 155 patents issued and we have an IP strategy that we follow every day, we essentially have exclusivity forever. My Tessy is currently commercialized by the company for the specialty market indication of HIV-related diarrhea. Another word for specialty is relatively small market, very important for the patient population. It was fast-tracked by the FDA for the HIV indication, one of the reasons why that was the first indication. But one of the most important things about our business strategy and about Crofelomer is that it is a pipeline within a product with multiple follow-on indications for this product that is already approved. We can't do everything at once, so the areas that we have focused on are cancer therapy-related diarrhea, a rare disease of short bowel syndrome with an orphan drug business development model, and a cholera indication for a second generation anti-secretory, which comes from the same natural product that is being pursued with the incentive of a tropical disease priority review voucher from the FDA. To give you some idea of the impact of the opportunities that we have selected, they are blockbuster in terms of the benefit they can pr provide to patients with no alternative treatments, and of course all the other stakeholders in the company that benefit from that as well. Cancer therapy related diarrhea, for example, there's no other products that have been tested and approved specifically for this indication. But if you look at another related supportive care indication, chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting, that's expected to be close to a $3 billion market this year. And typically those agents are taken for the first three days during a chemo cycle, whereas diarrhea with these new targeted therapies is often something that is going on chronically for a year or years as patients are being treated with these new targeted therapies to stay in remission. If we look at short bowel syndrome, for example, rare disease, orphaned indication, probably 40, 50,000 patients around the world, that's expected to be close to a $5 billion market in the next five years. And that's a third-party report that was generated before a product with our novel mechanism of action has even entered the mindset of the, of the opportunity. So we'll be talking about that in a moment. Overall, what can you expect? What are the momentum drivers in this company? We have, in the next 12 to 15 months, two major value-enhancing events. The first is the completion of the phase three, the single pivotal trial for cancer therapy related diarrhea. And the second is the completion of um, a proof of concept program for short bowel syndrome in Europe, which would allow the product to potentially enter the expanded patient access program and become a revenue generating product. Both of these are in the next 12 to 15 months and move these pipeline opportunities from exactly that, pipeline opportunities to tangible revenue generating opportunities. Um, we also have additional business development activities that are going on. For example, we just closed a deal in the Mideast about a week ago to expand the geographical opportunities for Profelmer. But in the meantime, what's going on this year is we have a second product launch, and that is Crofelomer for chemotherapy-induced diarrhea in dogs, and that trade name is Canalevia. As one analyst put it, it's the bird or the bird dog in the hand, what we have going on this year with the launch of our second product, and then two in the bush with short bowel syndrome and cancer therapy-related diarrhea, major events coming up in the next 12 to 15 months. So a little bit about Jaguar Animal Health. This is an emerging uh, small, this is a relatively small part of our business, but it, very important for this year. Post-pandemic, there's close to 100 million dogs in the United States. Over half of those over the age of 10 are going to be experiencing a tumor at some point. 
And the dog market is remarkably predictive of and analogous to the human market. About 40% of the time, both humans and dogs have to go off their chemotherapy or subtherapeutic dose because of the side effect of diarrhea. And in dogs, more so than humans, that comfort factor as well as the impact on outcome, but that comfort factor is one of the most important factors for a dog owner to make a decision to put their dog through chemotherapy and try to extend their life, both the comfort of the dog and the whole household. You can't have a dog that's lost control, that is messing up the carpets, the, the bed, etc. The other interesting thing from a financial reporting perspective, on the human side, as you'll see, there is also often great variability between our gross to net, depending on what our payer mix is, depending on what the chargebacks are, how much of the patients in a particular quarter are from government reimbursement. Whereas the animal market is pay out of pocket. So we have much greater predictability between our gross to net with just a small discount from the, from the distribution of the product. Overall, the strategy of the company with this pipeline and a product is risk mitigation. Most new drug applications fail because of a safety issue or of a manufacturing issue. We have a product that is already approved. We take it from essentially from a tree growing in the rainforest to we could take it to any pharmacy in the United States. Our supply chain is completely in place for Mitesi and it is a chronically approved product. So we have chronic safety, for example, two years carcinogenicity in hand. So it's a matter of defining those pivotal phase three clinical trials in agreement, in discussion, in collaboration with the FDA. So we take as much regulatory risk out of the process as possible, execute those trials, and then wait to see the statistical significance on the primary endpoint, which is exactly what we've done with cancer therapy related diarrhea. Um, as much as possible, we tried, have tried to build a business to live within our means commercially for the products that we sell, but then with expensive pipeline development activities, money is money, it's fungible, but pair it to non-dilutive dollars, business development relationships. Um, we have a royalty deal on our sales of MyTessie right now. And as I mentioned, we did just cut a deal about a month ago in the Mideast with Quadri Pharmaceuticals that is focused on all the indications of MITESI initially with HIV as there is greater awareness and government funding for those patients, which is one of the most rapidly growing areas of HIV infection in the Mideast. Okay, how does this product have applications in so many different patient populations? It's its novel mechanism of action. It's an anti-secretory. There's no other products on the market with this mechanism of action or that we are aware of that are in development. And it basically normalizes gut function. When there is an insult to the inside wall of the intestine, which could be due to a toxin, cholera, ETEC, it could be due to drug chemotherapy, it could be due to inflammation, IBD, Crohn's disease, it could be the HIV virus itself intercalating into the, the gut. It sets off a series of steps, but the common last step is the active secretion of excess chloride ions into the gut Water is coming in based on osmosis, and that's the watery diarrhea. And what Crofelner does is it normalizes that ion flow in an abnormal situation. So if you or I are normal and you swallow a whole bottle of Mitesi, nothing happens. To differentiate this from other agents that you might think of, Imodium, Loperamide, these are opioids. They work by the mechanism of constipation. So you can't be constipated in a chronic indication. And one of the reasons why we focus on severe chronic patient populations is that's where the advantages of our mechanism of, of action are highlighted and valued, where you don't want to interfere with the life-saving therapy that the cancer patient is on or the Crohn's disease patient is on. So we're not an opioid. We don't have that risk of constipation. We're not an antibiotic. We don't have the risk of resistance. The product is also locally acting in the gut, swallowed as a pill. It's enterocoded, goes through the stomach, into the intestine, does its thing, and then out it goes. So we have no drug-drug interaction. We have no secondary metabolites causing problems later on. And that goes a long way to explaining the safety of the product, which is a huge hallmark and advantage of this product. 
So if we look at just briefly some of these indications, again, I can't say it enough, those two major value enhancing events, the next 12 to 15 months, cancer therapy related diarrhea. We do, did have a phase two study which was investigator initiated, meaning exactly what those words said. It was an investigator initiated, we had no control over that study or the outcome or the design of that study. It was presented at the prestigious San Antonio Breast Cancer Conference in December of 2021, a collection of secondary endpoints that map to the primary endpoint that we have in the ongoing phase three clinical trial right now. So we're highly confident about the trial design that we have selected. Um, the trial is ongoing right now. <clears throat> we expect to have patient enrollment completed in the beginning of 2023. It's three months for the primary endpoint, and this would be a supplemental filing to my TESI that's currently on the market. So no additional safety, no additional drug-drug interactions, no additional manufacturing needs to com be completed. It's looking for the statistical significance on that primary endpoint in uh, the beginning of 2023. Then the second key point, short bowel syndrome, again, the next 12 to 15 months, key value enhancing um, activity. Uh, what we're looking for here is this is a product that has been licensed to a company that we established in Europe called Napo Therapeutics. Classic licensing deal, upfront payment, milestone payments, royalties, there's transfer pricing. In addition, we are well over the majority owner of Napo Therapeutics, so we get the equity value as well. Um, this is crofelomer, but it is not my Tessie. It is a highly concentrated liquid formulation that is much more appropriate for the health of this patient population and distinguishes it from my Tessie from a business perspective, the business model of rare diseases, where the cost of managing these patients is much more highly reimbursed if you can intervene there. So the key milestone in the next 12 to 15 months is revenue generation in Europe under the expanded patient access program that is available in Europe for orphan drug desi products designated as orphan drugs that you do not have in the United States. So what is this disease? Short bowel syndrome is a situation where normally your, your entire intestine may be 20 to 25 feet. These patients will have less than five feet. They may have as little as 30 centimeters. It could be for congenital reasons. It could be due to an accident. It could be due to surgical resection after inflammation, after cancer. So it's a heterogeneous population. What happens is these patients do not have enough length of their intestine to do the absorption of what I call the nutrients of life, your proteins, your fat, your, your carbohydrates, your, your minerals, and your vitamins. There's constantly secretion and absorption going on in your intestine. So quite often they end up on parenteral nutrition. Seven days a week, it could be as often as much as 20 hours a day. So that's a devastating health situation. They often end up with infections, organ shutdown, sepsis, again, quality of life is, there's no quality of life when you're completely hooked up to machines. And so what happens with these patients now is it's catastrophic. There's a small percentage, maybe 2.7%, that end up on a product called tebutaglide. Uh, it's Gatex in the United States, Restiv in, in Europe. Um, and that's in the growth hormone category, and the mechanism of action is to extend the length of the gut a bit to give the patient a little bit more time to absorb these nutrients of life. Again, only about 2.7% of the patients are, are candidates for this. Remarkably toxic, um, you have endocrine issues, cardiovascular issues, yet this is the category, the mechanism of action that is expected to grow to $5 billion. What crofelomer can do as an anti-secretory is decrease those secretions and give the patient more time to absorb those nutrients of life as well as affect stool formation. As you can imagine, it's just like a sieve. Whatever goes in comes immediately, immediately out. So to provide some relief from the diarrhea as well and impact not only the health of these patients, but the quality of life, reduce the amount of time even by 15 to 20% that they're on parenteral nutrition. And you're talking about reimbursement in the range of several hundreds of thousands of dollars a year because it takes several hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, if not millions of dollars a year, to t manage these patients chronically and with the uh, complications that they often have. 
So uh, the process has already been started and accepted by Napo Therapeutics in Europe to run proof of concept trials, investigator initiated proof of concept trials, so those requests have been accepted. The data is expected before the end of this year would be published. There's a conference in Dubai that is being targeted for a gastrointestinal presentation of this data. And that then makes Crofelomer a candidate for expanded patient access program in Europe. Again, it's not available in the United States, which brings in meaningful revenue. And that's another key value enhancing event, moving from a pipeline opportunity to a tangible value. And Jaguar, in addition to that product being under license to Jaguar, we get all the benefit of the clinical data that is being generated, as well as Napo Therapeutic getting the benefit of the cancer therapy that's being generated by Jaguar. So each team has its focus and is being shared with the other. I'm going to talk just briefly about the financial performance right now with Jaguar of Mitesi, the current indication for HIV. These are blue, blue charts are the gross and green is the net. And you can see in the second quarter of 2022, our financials went up about, about five-fold. This is the first product we ever commercialized. We had a lot to learn about the obstacles insurance companies put up for a, a new product to be reimbursed for those prescriptions to get filled. And uh, so we ex implemented an expanded patient access program to address prior authorizations. We have a hub service. We reduced the co-pays now down to zero. And, we, and this was all when the pandemic hit, so our reps also had to shelter at home and do Zoom meetings. So we've had a really nice increase in our, our gross and our net. In about the third quarter of last year, we continued that expanded, the uh, um, expanded patient access program by implementing a specialty pharmacy distribution network, which dramatically reduces our distribution costs and dramatically increases our gross to net. However, we did a, took a one-time hit where we took an inventory system of 60 to 70 days and moved it to a just-in-time distribution system. So while our prescriptions were growing, our revenue was not rec recognizing that because we were buying down inventory. That was completed in the fourth quarter of last year. Our gross to net improved from about 30-something percent to 70 percent, and we expect to see continued improvement of our gross to net and the recognition of our revenues throughout 2022 as that specialty pharma shift is now completed, which we took a lot of lumps for, but it was the right thing to do for the business, and it's the right thing to do as we prepare in the future for the launch of Mitesi for the cancer therapy diarrhea-related indication. We do have one other program that is a discovery stage. It's called Entheogen Therapeutics Initiative, and this is focused on psychoactives and psychedelics for mood disorders and mental health disorders. There are many companies that are well-financed that are focused on this area right now. There's about eight different agents that they're chasing, um, MDMA, psilocybin, ketamines. What we're looking for is the next generation, new ways of treating and curing mental health disorders and mood disorders by collaborating with these companies. We'll do what we do best. We are mobilizing an asset that we have of 2,300 medicinal plants, 3,400 extracts. We have a scientific strategy team of the who's who of ethnobotanists who have worked with psychedelics in tropical areas. Uh, proprietary information about how these are being utilized in the field by shamans. We know how to do a botanical approval, the CMC aspect of that, and then collaborates with companies that are doing remarkable, innovative clinical development and regulatory strategies and ultimately commercialization of second generation um, products in the mental health disorder. So you can expect to see a business development activity there in the next year. We have um, a lot of milestones, a lot of news, meaty, they're typically financial. Every quarter our financials are coming out. Um, the second quarter will be the first year for, re uh, the first quarter for revenues from Canalevia. There is a second indication of Canalevia that is expected by the end of the year for exercise induced diarrhea in dogs. And, you know, I don't know why any dog would have exercise. This isn't a candidate for exercise induced diarrhea, but this can be Iditarod dogs all the way to bird dogs. Um, uh, agility dogs, et cetera, and uh, more business development activities, and then, of course, the activity that is going to be associated with short bowel syndrome, proof of concept data, publication, expanded patient access, completion of the cancer therapy-related diarrhea program. 
We have about 77 million shares outstanding. We have no warrants that are out in the hands of uh, microcap investors that are being traded around. We have not done any structured financing in the past two years. We spent that two years to clean up the capitalization chart to clean up the balance sheet. So it's a very straightforward um, uh, balance sheet at this time. The team, there are 10 of us have been together for over 15 years, three of us who've been together for over 30 years. So we know where every little piece of data is, a great deal of mind share, brain share in this company. The Napo Thera team in Europe is a separate dedicated team that has experience specifically with rare disease, orphan drugs, business model in Europe, though there is a close collaboration between a joint steering committee. And one of the reasons why Napo Thera is able to move so quickly is they are singularly focused, but collaborate and benefit and leverage the knowledge that we have. Board of Directors has a combination of business and finance and uh, commercial experience. And then in conclusion here, we are a commercial stage company for a specialty market, which is a relatively small market. It'll never be more than 50 to 60 million in the United States. Very important for that patient population. But we are moving along the value chain now from being considered just supportive care, which is important, to outcome impact, for example, so cancer therapy related diarrhea, keep those patients on their therapy, to disease management intervention when we get into the short bowel syndrome area. For the most part, we try to pair our programs. Money is fungible, it's in one pot for non-dilutive financing. This is the year of the dog, the bird in hand is Canalevia. As we finish those major milestones for short bowel syndrome, cancer therapy related diarrhea. And as I mentioned, we do have 146 patents that are issued, file new patents all the time. But there is no practical pathway to gener generate a generic for crofelomer. So it's interesting in business development conversations when you do terminal value calculations, we essentially have exclusivity forever. And I think I left a minute or two for questions if there are any questions. Thank you very much for listening. Yes, sir. There's a number of reasons, but the easiest reason to explain is a botanical, in addition to all the chemical specifications that you would have for any synthetic drug, it also has a bioassay, which is not in the public domain. So nobody knows how to make, what generic companies do is they reverse engineer from the published specifications. Nobody knows what the specification is of the crofelomer that got approved. Sure. So we have this is the questions about the how do we know we have the same product from a botanical source? So we have uh, specifications that you know that are agreed to from the FDA that are chemical specifications. They have HPLCs, they have FP and MR, um, but they also have a bioassay associated with them to ensure that not only the chemical specifications are met, but that there's nothing else in there that is um, harming the biological activity. So our um, you know, our quality has to be up to 99%, just like a synthetic product as well. And the one thing I can say about um, crofelomer is we just had our 33rd anniversary, and crofelomer has been the lead product in this company. So we've been doing this for a long, long time and have had remarkable reproducibility of the, of, I, I don't know if it's thousands, but certainly hundreds of lots at this point, and have never had an advert, never have had an adverse event, serious adverse event associated with the product. Okay, I think that timing might have worked out just perfectly. Thank you very much.